Let's just pause for a moment of prayer. Lord, we are deeply moved by that expression of a deep surrender in view of the world that we see today. We are salvationists of the 21st century, and every story told in every verse is true. We see it, we hear about it, we watch it, we touch it, and you've called us to this world. Help us to be faithful to that mission, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. I want to honor someone tonight, and I hope I don't embarrass him. So I do need to apologize for not asking his permission. His name is Pavel. And he was my driver since I arrived here. So I know all of you thought I should stand up here and tell you all about my new shoes that I bought this morning. <laughs> as a great memory of the beautiful Prague. But I think Pavel will be my memory. He's my souvenir. Aren't you, Pavel? Um, he, he, by the way, he was here, started working for the army from its earliest days. And uh, when he started to drive, I don't normally do this, tell these stories, but I realized very quickly, he is such an intelligent man. He knows so much about creation. This man is really very, very smart. And I tell you, I've been sitting at his feet learning, and he is a very clever man. <laughs> yes, Pamela, I'm getting, I'm getting to this because they need to know you're a very godly man. You're a very godly man. He loves to talk about Jesus. He just loves to have spiritual conversations. So being with him, just even these short trips, we have talked about the joy of Christian fellowship. But you don't mind me saying, he, he has been bereaved of his wife last year, and uh, that is a very sad time for him. After the open air today, he was driving us back to the hotel, and we had to wait to get into the car. Do you know why? A lady needed to breastfeed the child, it was too cold. So Pavel let her sit in the car. Wow. I, I just mentioned those things uh, because he's ministered to me. I just felt in those short hours I've been with him, he knew mission almost from every angle. He knew it about serving suffering humanity. He knows it himself as Jesus ministers to him. And he actually was introduced to Jesus at 17 years of age when an inquiring mind of a young man was introduced to a man who talked to him about God and creation. And here we find another man who did mission. And as a result, we have a man of God. Well, I can't keep honoring people tonight, but I do want to honor one other. And I haven't, didn't ask her permission either. I could be in trouble by the end of this message. Commissioner Ingrid Lindbergh is here tonight. Now, she really will say something to me afterwards. I know that. But don't bother. I'm going to run out real quick. I met her many, many years ago, and I knew almost within the first hour I was talking with someone with a great sense of the Lord, a great spiritual death, a great simple faith, but deep in the Lord. And uh, she's been retired for many years, but she's never stopped being an active soldier for Jesus. 
And I travel many places in the world and I often see her. And I think, will somebody really expect me at her age to keep going to Congresses? <laughs> but I tell you, she is an inspiration. And before I came here, I got an email and telling me she's with me in this and she's praying for me. Well, she models to me, she models to me what it is to be a leader. She models for me what it is to be an officer. She models for me what it is to be a salvationist. She models for me what it is to be a Christian. You see, she's been doing mission all her life. She has no idea how many people, like me, have been introduced to Christ in a deeper way and who's engaged in mission in a deeper way because she has given her all to Jesus. Well, this mission we talk about in the Salvation Army is really the mission of God. It is the mission of Jesus. I always try to make that very clear when I speak to congregations about what this one mission is all about. And we heard the scripture reading today. And I want to say to you that it's very clear from this scripture reading and from other scripture readings in other parts of the Gospels that the mission of Jesus Christ, this mission of ours, is rooted in compassion. Though John's Gospel doesn't say it, Matthew's does, as, do, as does Mark, that when Jesus saw this enormous crowd of people who were hungry, people who had actually followed him, says John's Gospels, just because they wanted to see miracles, but he took the opportunity, say the other Gospels, to teach them about the kingdom of God. And they must have listened with rapt attention and were so long under the ministry of Jesus that it was late and they were hungry. And Matthew's Gospel and Mark's Gospel says that Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw this crowd as sheep without a shepherd, realized they were hungry, and we have to do something about it right now. And mission for Jesus in that moment was rooted in his compassion. By the way, I just do want to say here, it was a miracle he did break five loaves and two fishes, a little boy's lunch, and fed 5,000 men, and no doubt their families as well. Now, we can try to explain miracles, and I think Europe, honestly, has been in trouble over the years because early on when we got into the scientific modernity, church leaders and Christians wanted very much to keep the gospel relevant to the age in which they lived. And the age in which they lived could not buy into miracles because they were scientific people. And if you can't explain it, it can't surely be true. So we then got away from, well, it really isn't. That is just sort of put there to give Jesus a message or to show Jesus as a miracle worker. Beloved, Jesus did miracles. Now, I don't know how he did it. I don't know if he kept breaking this bread and he just kept breaking it and breaking it and breaking it. Barclay used to say he, people just shared their lunch. I think Jesus broke five loaves, two fishes, fed over 5,000 people, and there were leftovers, and I believe it was a mighty miracle of God. Truly. I know that in John's Gospel, these great miracles are considered signs. They point to something deeper. They point to something about Jesus that's deeper than somebody who can just feed people on a very physical level. But I want you to know that in the Gospel, it is very clear that not only are these signs, but they are mission, the mission of Jesus rooted in compassion. He addressed human need where he saw it. 
He didn't spiritualize everything. When he met someone who was grieving like a Mary and a Martha, yes, he did raise Lazarus from the dead, but he entered into their grief, and they must have been deeply moved when Jesus wept over their brother. And you need to remember that, friends. And some of you who have lost loved ones, you need to understand that Jesus knows how to weep with you. He doesn't say, don't cry. He doesn't say, just get it together and march on. He weeps with you. When Jesus met a totally dysfunctional man called the Gadarene demoniac, according to Mark 5, dysfunctional on every level of his being, physically, socially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And Jesus deals with all the issues. While others ran away. All the medical needs in the Bible. The blind and the deaf. These miracles, yes, they're signs that he can give us spiritual sight and he can give us spiritual hearing and spiritual cleansing, but he touched blind eyes. He agonized, I'm sure, with those who had never heard before in their life. He cared about a father who was anxious about the illness of his son. Jesus entered into people's pain. He entered into people's pain and the miracle working, lovely, gracious Jesus. Moved with compassion, changed their lives. He felt for the ostracized when others wouldn't touch lepers. Jesus would take that risk. He felt for the oppressed, and women were oppressed. And Luke's gospel calls us to look at some of these women. And all the gospels do. People who are oppressed because of a, a disease that would be not welcomed in the community. Of a lifestyle that was embarrassing. Women who suffered because of the death of a son. Jesus brought them out of the shadows into community and into light. The mission of Jesus, if it is to be a mission that we can embrace, we need to know it has to be a mission that is not a cold clinical duty. It is not a mission that we do because we are followers of William and Catherine Booth. It is not a mission that we do because we now have it on a beautiful logo. It is not a mission because we want to be seen as do-gooders. The mission of Jesus is rooted in the heart of Jesus, in the compassion of Jesus. And when he saw the hungry people It was time to close his preaching book and break some bread. And I believe this mission of Jesus for us, beloved, is seen all around the world. You've seen some of it tonight on the screen. You've heard stories about it here. But I've been to Latvia, I've been to Moldova, I've been to Estonia, I've been to many of your places, and I visited some of these places. I saw the mission of Jesus being done at a clinic. I saw the mission of Jesus being done in some of these centers. I've seen the mission of Jesus in so many ways, touching lives, people being embraced as they come into an army hall, 
We're doing the mission of Jesus. We're doing it. And beloved, I need to say to you again and again and again, we have to make sure that the mission of Jesus for us is because his heartbeat is our heartbeat. While it's really important for me as a salvationist to do what God has called us to do, I do have a sense of responsibility and duty, and you do. But I want to do that out of the love that God has shed abroad in my heart for those who are hurting. And so do you. We still want to weep for people. But that mission has to be centered in Christ Jesus. Yes, they loved the bread. They really did. They wanted to make him prophet. They wanted to make him king. Surely this is someone who's very special. Let's keep following. We need more bread. We need more bread for our stomachs. And Jesus had to say, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. There is a hunger in humanity that is deeper than a physical hunger. Yes, manna came down from heaven, truly. But the true manna that God has sent down from heaven, Jesus said, it's me. He says, I am the bread. I am the bread sent down from heaven. I am the bread of life. If you are hungry, it's me who will meet your deepest hungers and your deepest needs. We have to believe it in the Salvation Army. We can't hear words about transformation and then not believe that the miracle working God can do miracles at a much deeper level than we can ever imagine. We talk about the mission of meeting people in love by all means. The hurting and the broken, the lonely, the dispossessed and lost. They're, they're hungry people. They're, they're, hungry at a, they're hungry at a deeper, they're hungry at a deeper level. Hurting people are hungry to be healed, some of them with deep, deep emotional scars, are hungry to be healed, are hungry for the touch of Jesus. Broken people are hungry. They may have been broken through their own failure, the failure of others, but they're hungry for Jesus. They're hungry for wholeness. Those who are lonely are, are hungry for comfort, are hungry to belong, to feel secure. And the kind, of, the kind of hunger they have has to be met by something deeper than just a pat on the head. They need Jesus at the deepest level. And the dispossessed, the homeless, the ones who feel disconnected and dis de detached. They do have a hunger. They're hungry for home. They're hungry to be at home. And it's a hunger so deep, I don't think the world really understands it, but Jesus does. And the lost are hungry. And some of them don't even understand, what is it I'm hungry for? Friends, they're hungry to be saved. They're hungry for salvation. And only he, the bread of life, can meet the deepest hungers of the soul. His life, he would tell them, was like a piece of bread. And out on Golgotha's hill, one day, 
How do you feed hungry people at the deepest level? The way you feed them on the physical. You need to break the bread. But we break bread and we don't think about it. But if you can imagine bread having feelings, there is pain in the tearing. On Golgotha's Hill, what we call a Good Friday, the flesh of Jesus was torn. On Golgotha's Hill, the heart of Jesus was broken. On Golgotha's Hill, he was torn away from the Father for the sins of the world. And that's how he fed us. That's how he fed us. But he wants to keep feeding the world his mission is ours. We can do all the celebration we want, but the truth of the matter is, friends, to do the mission of Jesus with a heart of compassion and see the wounded and the worried and the wearied, it's costly. My life must be Christ's broken bread. My love is outpoured wine. That other souls. You see, we talk so much, oh, well, should, should the Salvation Army use wafers and wine to remember Jesus? He is the only true sacrament. And your life is his bread. Your life is his wine. And in the breaking and the pouring, the world is fed. I want us to sing that song tonight. I, I hope you know it. Beneath his name and sign. Why? That other souls refreshed and fed may share his life through mine. In a positive way, the mission of Jesus is the most exhilarating, thrilling, fulfilling experience in all of our lives. But on another level, it's costly, and you must never, ever take the cost out of mission, or it's not mission. If it was only done at the deepest level at Calvary, it cannot be done by the Salvation Army in a superficial way. Your life. Christ's broken bread. I'm going to suggest tonight, just as we sing it, where salvation is here, maybe those who aren't belong to another church, I don't know. But I want this to be a corporate and yet a personal commitment to the Lord. One army, one mission. 
with one message. Let's sing it very prayerfully together.